subscribe and click the bell icon to turn on notifications. Let's look at an example of how we can integrate the past tools we have discussed into one workflow. The data set we are going to use is a list of movies with the rating, director, and actor listed in a separate file. What we wanted for our output is to have the data from all of the data sets together in one data stream and clean them as well. As the first step, let's check on our four data sets first. According to the metadata on the results window, our fields are all in V string in the same size. Going back to our data tab, we can see a small yellow line on the data quality bar of all the fields, which indicates that it has null rows. We can also see a red bar on the movie title that indicates that some of its lines have white spaces. We also have three ID fields in the file, movie ID, director ID, and actor ID. We will use these IDs later to join our data sets together. Let's combine the movie title fields and the ratings first. Add a join tool to the canvas from the join tool set. Connect the movie's title into the left input actor while the ratings will be on the right. Configure the join tool to join by a specific field since we have IDs on both data sets. Then set the left field to movie ID and the right join field to title ID. On the embedded select window, Let's select the title ID field, then run the workflow. The connection progress shows us that we have joined 46 records on the J output anchor. But there were also 10 records on the left output anchor that were not matched by movie ID. This means that the ratings for these movies are not available on the ratings file. Look at the L output anchor. We have six rows that are null and four that have data. We wanted to put those four rows back into our data stream and disregard the nulls. What we need to do is add a filter tool, connect it to the left anchor, then configure it as a basic filter wherein movie ID is not null. Run the workflow to check our progress. We have now successfully removed the null rows, so let's mark this data since its ratings are not available. This will make a future QA easier if we are looking at missing outputs. On a new formula tool, add a column called rating, then set it as a data type VW string that's 255 in size. For its value, set it as the text not available enclosed in quotes. Now that we have it marked, let's add a union tool to put this data back to our current data stream. Connect the output anchor of the formula tool into the input of the union tool. Do the same for the J anchor. You can check if the fields are aligned by looking at the manually configure fields output columns list. Let's run the workflow again to see if we have done it correctly. In the output window, looking at the far right of the data set, we now have the rating where the lines that did not join earlier have been included with the mark not available. Now let's connect the director names to the data set. There is only one director ID per line so we can use the join tool to match it by director ID. On a new join tool, connect the output anchor of the union tool into the left input anchor of the join tool. Then connect the director input data to the right input anchor. Once done, configure it to join by specific fields using the director ID column. As we can see on the embedded select window, there is a duplicate field on the output. We can remove it by clicking on options then click on Deselect Duplicate Fields, then push the field director name to the bottom of the director ID on the list by selecting the field, then clicking the arrow up four times. Once that is done, run the workflow again. We now have three of our data sets available. Let's add the final one. The actor ID of the data set has been concatenated per movie. So this time we can't rely on the join tool but instead we're using the find and replace tool. Drag a find and replace tool into the canvas. The left input anchor will be from the J output anchor of the earlier join tool, while the right input will be from the actor's data set. We will now configure the tool to look for any instance of the actor's ID and replace them with the specific actor name. To do so, 
set the find method to any part of the field, set the find within field to actor's ID, then set the find value to actor ID of the right input. Then, for the replace, choose replace found text with value, then set this to actor name. Enable the replace multiple found items. Run the workflow if you are done. Looking at the actor's ID field, we now have replaced the ID with the value of each actor's name. Since we are using the full name for the directors and actors, let's ensure that these fields are in the correct title case. Add a multi-field formula into the canvas, then connect the output of the Find Replace tool to the input of the multi-field. In configuring the tool, select the field Director Name and Actors ID on the list. Since we are just updating the field, you do not need to enable the copy output fields and change output type. Then, on the expression editor, let's add the function. From the Functions tab, under the Strings category, select Title Case. In this function, indicate the string to be the variable underscore current field underscore. This will process both our director name and actor's ID into the Title Case format. Then let's convert our date published field to the proper date type and format by using the date time tool. Add the tool to the canvas and put it after the multi field formula. In the configuration, set the conversion format to string to date slash time format. Then set the string field date published as the field to be converted. Its new column name will be screening date. Once we have that selected, specify English as the language. Our date published string date has the format days, then months, and year, all separated by a period. We will use a custom format since it is not available in our list. Select Custom on the format list. Then on the text box, type percent symbol followed by lowercase d, then put the separator period. Then Percent symbol again followed by smaller case M. Another separator period, then percent uppercase Y. This specifier format means that the days are in two digits, same with the month and the year in full four digits. The separators are indicated in between. You can check if you have created the correct format by looking at the example below. The example should match the format that you have indicated while the output will be in the designer ISO date format of year dash month dash day. We still have an unformatted field in our data set, which is the movie title. We will need to trim some of its white space as indicated by the red triangle above the cells that has white space. To do so, add a formula tool to the canvas. Set the column as movie title. Then on the expression editor, add the trim function. Specify the string to be cleansed as movie title. Then run the workflow to check our progress. Now we have no white space left as proven by our data quality indicator bar, which is now all in green. Looking at the output data anchor, we still have a concatenated field that is left in our data set, specifically the actor's ID. Since we are not sure of how many actors there are for our data set, Let's count the values first. Add a text to columns tool to the canvas and connect it to the formula tool. Set the column to split into actors ID with the symbol comma as the delimiter. Then set it as split to rows and enable skip empty columns. This will split actors ID into rows. Once done, let's add the summarize tool so we can count how many rows it is split into for each movie. Put the Summarize tool after the text to columns used earlier. Then select Movie ID and set its action to Group By. After that, select Actors ID and set its action to Count Distinct Non-Null. This will give us an output of Movie ID and the count of Actor ID that it has. But we still need to get the maximum count from this list. To do so, add a new Summarize tool, then Using the count distinct underscore actors ID field, set the action to max and run the workflow. We now have the maximum number of actors available in our data set. 
Let's use this information to split our original data stream to four actor columns. In a new text to columns tool, set the column actor IDs and the delimiter comma symbol. Now let's select split to columns with four as the number of columns. Let's leave extra characters in the last column and use the word actors as the output root name. Once done, run the workflow. Since we have completed our cleansing and blending process, we can now remove the extra columns that we don't need anymore. In a select tool, deselect the director's ID, actor's ID, and date published. Then move the actors1 to actors4 below the director name. Once done, we can now save this output to our desired path and format via the output data tool. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.